Hello everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by my video. I'm going to be um, taking out a few things I recently purchased uh, and I'll have you look at this for just a few seconds. Uh, I am on a no buy for brushes and paints but on a low buy for paper because obviously it's what I go through the most. So I was searching online on Amazon for some new watercolor paper, cotton watercolor paper, and was very pleasantly surprised at the prices that I saw and super excited about this. Um, oh man, I can't wait. I hope all the hype pays off. Uh, by the way, a huge thank you to uh, Shayna Searcy. Her love of watercolor folk art inspired art has rubbed off on me and I did record myself painting some of these things and well if everything works out fine immediately following this video if if I can't promise but if it works out fine and if I can find a way to finagle this edited video or this video into this one I will do so even if it's really fast you'll be able to see uh, what I am going to be doing so far I haven't even finished it so we'll see how that works out by the way this is on the uh, Bao Hung 7x10 watercolor paper block. There's about, after this sheet, about three or four sheets left. So love, love, love their academic watercolor paper. Let me go ahead and have a seat so I can show you guys. Really good. <laughs> I don't do many hauls in my channel and you won't see them in my channel even if I wasn't on a low buy. Because honestly, <laughs> My budget doesn't allow me for all the splurging that I wish I could do. But because I am on a no buy for paints and brushes, I figure I can put that extra $25 to $30 a month that I give to myself for supplies uh, towards the paper. So that's the way I can justify it. And so the first one here, oh, it's upside down or there we go, is the Wonder Forest Watercolor Journal. Now, just the actual sketchbook itself looks so nice. And um, this is a couple of years old. Um, I think at least a year and a half to two years. So she's been um, doing her watercolor journals now for quite some time. I don't know if she'll watch this video, but if she does, first of all, the price is fantastic. It's very budget friendly. And um, well, let's just go ahead and see what this is all about. Oh, well, look at that. I don't even have to I don't even have to, um, well, I guess I do have to cut into it just a bit. I have um, sensory issues with my hands, especially my fingertips. So the fact that this watercolor sketchbook, this art journal, has a smooth faux leather finish, I'm very, very appreciative of that. And you get 20 sheets, 300 GSM, 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. I think I made that more difficult than it needed to be. Let me make sure that it's, um. oh, okay. So designed in Canada, made in China. And this is the website for her. But like I said, I did order it through Amazon. I'm really excited. Oh man, how do I appreciate this? Sweet. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Okay. Oh, it's nice and thick. This reminds me a lot of, um, no. Is it the same? I'm not gonna say nothing until I actually test it out. <laughs> and it's not a bad thing either. It's not a bad thing at all. I just, I wanna make sure. Either way, it looks fantastic. And I, oh man, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate this. So it's basically, you know, the pad right there is attached to the back. And it lays flat. It's not attached to the binding whatsoever very very grateful for that very grateful for that oh i cannot wait 
very nice okay so that is the wonder forest watercolor journal i'm going to make a separate video just you know just for this so you guys can see and let me just bring back the artwork i was doing i i want the paper i purchased to do this and i favor bao hung paper over arsh so <laughs> Both the Academy and the Artist Grade. It's something I've done now for over a year. I'm very loyal to this brand. So, um, yeah. I, I need for the paper I buy to give me the same experience. And that isn't always the case. So, I'm hoping, you know, my high hopes will be good for this. And the next is a set of two. By the way, that's $19.99 plus tax. I think that's wonderful for a watercolor journal that has 20 sheets 40 if you would you know count back to back and so right here we have two blocks 20 sheets each of the new york central art supply 100 percent cotton watercolor paper block five by seven and this i saw off of jerry's artorama and I'm really, really eager to test this out. I think I'm going to just do a quick, a quick little artsy piece because <laughs> I can't wait to, you know, to make another video just for this. All right. So the fact that you get two and each block comes with 20 sheets. So you get 45 by seven sheets for $19.99, basically. I think, again, that's very budget friendly to me. Okay, I'm looking for, it doesn't come with the tool to pry. Oh, here we go, found it. Yep, so you just insert your palette knife or whatever it is that you use in the space right here. And then you can just pry your paper right off. All right, so let me just show you the texture of the paper. Let me see if I can put my flash on. Excuse the background noise. Dinner's being made, my son is home, and the dishes are being run. So, a little bit of home noise for you. But you can see, really nice texture. A bit more smoother than what I'm used to. Kind of feeling it, it feels soft. I'll be honest, that worries me a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, but let us let me go ahead. I'll be right back, and we'll do something together. Okay, so I just flipped the block upside down and I'm going to take from the colors I already have here this is just a mixture of the Paul Rubens burnt sienna and burnt umber together I was using these colors for the piece that you guys saw earlier and I'm just going to take a light wash and paint in a heart So I'm basically going to try to repeat the same art that I'm working on now that's a bit more intense and do the same but on a much smaller scale. I'm using my Artegria number no. 6 mop brush and this paper feels soft. I don't know if that makes any sense but I've heard other artists talk about how their paper feels soft and this is definitely I'm definitely experiencing that I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I'm used to texture I'm used to feeling a bit of pull if you will with my with my brush so so far it's going good it's going okay I mean I'm not you know running it through a bunch of tests or giving it an official review this is just a quick little demonstration so I have a neutral color there for my heart I'm gonna go ahead and use my heating tool to speed up the drying process and then I can begin to uh, paint in the uh, the whimsical style background <laughs> I'll be right back Okay, so I'm going to just bring in a bit of the Burnt Umber from Paul Rubens into 
whatever I have going on here, which I believe is a mixture of the burnt sienna and um, from Paul Rubens as well, and the sour violet. And that's a handmade watercolor from Jasper Stardust. All right, so I'm just going to go in here, wet on to dry, and I'm going to begin to block off the areas here. It's taking the color beautifully so far. I'm a big fan of textured watercolor paper and this definitely is not textured enough for my liking but so far I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing you can see the granulation well, at least I can that's really pretty all right so I'm gonna go ahead and flip my lock upside down and then uh, let's see I'm gonna bring this out a bit more. Clean off my brush and I'm gonna mix some yellow ochre. Separately over here and I'm gonna come. You'll have to excuse the fact that I need <laughs> to do certain things upside down. It's just the way I do things. That wet onto wet is absolutely beautiful. So, so far, so good. I just have to get used to the fact that it's not as heavily textured as my favorite paper. This is unlike any other paper I've ever worked with before. So I can't compare it, it's like on its own, which I think is a good thing. I did watch a little bit of the video that's currently up by Jerry's Artorama. And uh, a lot of positive comments underneath that video. I'm gonna drop in a bit of that yellow ochre right here. Not pretty. You can see a bit of the sour violet coming through. And by the way, the sour violet is, uh, again, a wonderful handmade watercolor from Jasper Stardust, very pretty. All right, so we have a very simple uh, background here and I'm thinking maybe it would be nice to have oh, this is turning out to be a, a whole painting session here <laughs> an impromptu painting session um, let's get some of that burnt sienna and you know for the sake of the video I'll just I'll just leave it with these simple colors. Hands are a bit shaky. And I'm just going to soften this up. I am able to have that nice blending. No hard lines are formed. And some of my colors from my Paul Rubens palette sometimes are difficult to move around, especially the Payne's Gray and the darker colors, but this, uh, this seems to let me do what I want to do. It's, again, very different, but it's, I'm impressed so far. Very nice. All right, so just blending it as much as I can. I'm actually going to activate the gold color gold watercolor from the Starry Night palette because I have a feeling I'm gonna I'm gonna use that all right so I'm just gonna kind of come up against the color line right there and it does stay damp for a good amount of time with some nice wet onto wet bleeds right there purposely kind of skimming my brush over the top right there Okay, I'm not going to begin to fuss over certain things because if not, we'll be here all afternoon. 
again, I'm not going for perfection either, so excuse the lack of, <laughs> you know, perfect symmetry here for this heart. I do, however, want to darken this area up here. Okay, it's really, really nice for these nice soft blends. Doing this on purpose. This reminds me of my friend Amber's uh, landscape backgrounds. She always has those little blooms of color coming up from her from her landscapes. Very pretty. All right, so try not to overwork it. I'm going to go ahead and use my heating tool, and we can bring in some whimsical trees or something. I don't know. I'll think about it, but give me a few seconds. I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and heat set everything and I'm just gently with my damp brush just making that, um, that's my son by the way, he's okay. That's just how he sounds and expresses himself. Um, you know, this is really nice. It's definitely different, uh, but I can see myself using this paper for more smoother, more um, finished stylized pieces of art. A gnome would look really nice on this right here, on this paper. All right, so quick blast of heat. I'll be right back. All right, let's go ahead and mix up some green. I need some earthy, earthy green here. And I'm thinking I can just mix a bit of some Paul Rubens sap green with whatever I have hanging out right here and right here too. <laughs> no waste of colors here whatsoever all right i'm going to go ahead and just bring in some whimsical wonky um trees and i might need to do this upside down just to kind of get a good grasp on everything just gonna move my brush up down up twisting and turning down like that drop in as much color in certain areas as possible I'm not going to worry about smoothing things out and then maybe come in with a slightly clean brush just come back over here and right here I don't know why I did that but I just did don't know if I like that too much so let me just blend things together here you can see I can blend very easily I love that there is absolutely no warping or puckering of the paper because even with blocks you know working with watercolor paper blocks you still get some some of that you know along the way at least I do I guess it depends on how much you know water and the technique you're using but I know I do Okay, and I'm gonna just, gosh, this is just so nice. Very surprised. All right, so let's grab some Van Zyke Brown. And I'm just going to come right in here. Like that. And I'm thinking maybe we can Thicken that up just a bit. I love adding Van Dyke Brown to my greens. And I can easily add more color. And it blends right in. Okay, so, so far so good. I guess it's just the visual texture thing. I like to see the roughness of cold press this is actually really nice. Let's go ahead and do another one. And then I'll, I'll leave you guys alone. <laughs> um, let's see, gosh, I love this right here. Maybe we can make, you know, it doesn't have to be the same color. Let me come in here with 
that sour violet and burnt umber mixture. And I'll just make, see right here how it's light? So just basically moving my brush around, twisting and turning. Okay, and then some Van Dyke Brown. All right, here. And if it's that way, then I'll do it this way. Might need to go in a bit heavier with the Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going to flip this upside down really quickly just to define this color line right here a bit more. This is my Artegria, my very well used and loved Artegria number 10 brush. Okay, so just make that a bit more defined right there. And then maybe we can just have um, I don't know. Let's see. What are we at? We're at, oh, we're not even at 15 minutes. Okay, we're good. <laughs> we're good. I think we can add one more. All right, so we can just come right here and maybe this one's a bit taller. Again, this is all just testing out. Okay, keep on picking up buzz. There we go. That's, that's nice. I usually fuss with a lot of details, but I'm going to try not to fuss. <laughs> Let me um, darken up this right here. I love how there's a darker color up here because of the color right there. I'm going to go ahead and heat set this really quickly. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna just come in with a smaller brush. This is just a number two Princeton Elite. And I'm gonna grab the Van Dyke Brown. And just do like little lines here. I see a lot of this in whimsical artwork. Kind of coming up there in the middle and then just going like that. I don't know if it's going to show up too much because I put a lot of dark color on here, but that's okay. seen some people even go all the way to the top. I'm a bit nervous in doing this because I, I've i never tried this art style before, but I can see why so many people love it because it's a lot of fun and it's very freeing. Um, definitely very, you know, not too much pressure for it to look, you know, all perfect and whatnot. to use the same brush for the gold. It takes a few moments for that gold to get going so the longer you let it sit the better. It's really really rich and concentrated and honestly I I am so tempted. <laughs> I really am. I am so tempted to I'm just gonna do it because you know what this is for fun. This is for fun. I purchased this for fun. To take the pressure off of using my less precious watercolor paper so guess what there's going to be a gold 
a gold, I was going to say heart, a gold sun or a moon. This is the Starry Night color, in case you're wondering. Well, of course it's stuck to that. Uh, let's see, it is number 903. It's very liquidy, but it is just so pretty. I'm not used to working with smaller brushes, so my hands are very, very shaky. Smaller, thinner brushes. You know what? That doesn't look half bad. Let's go ahead and very gently line that right there. This takes this to like the next level. Highly, highly recommend this paper for budget-friendly, you know, low-pressure, watercolor fun, watercolor practice. What, what a great paper to introduce, you know, yourself to cotton watercolor paper without breaking the bank. It isn't as textured as what I'm used to, and I like the Rough Grain by Bao Hung and also Ar Arsh. So that's what I'm used to. This is really different. Um, it worried me. I'm going to be honest. When I first saw it, it looked like the Paul Rubens 50% cotton paper, which is just basura. <laughs> it really is garbage. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. Um, so I was a bit worried, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's just, it's not that. All right. So I'm really tempted I think this is much better to make it stand out a bit more. Oh, how fun. How fun. Okay, so. Oop, one second, please. Sorry about that, guys. My son was coming over to show me his number balloons. Right, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just finish this up. This was definitely just for practice, just a quick, you know, seeing how I felt about this paper. First impressions, perfect. Yep, first impressions. And like I said, I don't, I won't get to do a lot of those on this channel. I wish I could. I wish I could afford doing, you know, the hauls and things like that, but honestly, I just can't. Your Walmart delivery is on its way. Thank goodness. <laughs> My Walmart is over two hours away, two and a half hours away on bus, and it's about a 20 minute, 20, 25 minute car ride. So I do depend and appreciate Walmart delivery. All right, and then last but not least, let's just go ahead and line our heart with some gold. Isn't this color absolutely stunning? I am the worst at drawing a continuous line. Out of a possible 10, I would definitely give this, I would say, a 9. I'm going to give it a 9. The only reason I don't give it a 10 is because I like the rough uh, textured paper more. So, I, you know, this paper is a bit smooth for my taste, but you can see how easily I worked it with a quick practice piece, you know, a quick first impressions piece of art. And we did it in real time.
And y'all know we can't do nothing without some ghost bladder. Splatter all the things and be happy. Alrighty guys, so that is my first impressions art, really quick. This is what I'm used to, by the way, in case you're wondering, you know, up close, the texture of the paper, you know. I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely a difference. I'm going to try my best to go take a quick uh, natural light thumbnail outside. Today is Monday. Um, yep, Monday, February 6th, 4.46 p.m. Let me hurry up. You guys hopefully will see this uh, later on this evening. And I will definitely be doing a more closer... Uh, first impressions art uh, demonstration on the Wonder Forest watercolor journal. Yeah, this one definitely has more pockiness to it too. This one is also smooth. Alrighty. Alright guys, thank you for watching if you did. And again, I highly recommend this paper. Perfect, perfect for introducing yourself to a fun, budget-friendly cotton watercolor paper. All right, let me go take that picture and stop babbling. All right, guys. Bye. All right, everyone. I'm in my backyard. So I wanted just to show you really quickly a comparison of the paper because I think the uh, Baohong Academy Cold Press Cotton Watercolor Paper, 140 pound, is the best comparison to the New York Central paper that I just got today. And you can see the beautiful texture that the bao hung has. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is a artwork that I have not finished, but I will. Pretty little songbird for Valentine's. And then this is the piece that I just did with you guys. And you can clearly see, let me just grab this and put it up there. See, you can clearly see the texture, which I prefer more. But I'm going to make space in my art world, if you will, for this paper because it's just too too budget friendly not to give it a chance and work it so and i'm glad i got the smaller blocks i was going to get the larger sizes but i think i would have felt overwhelmed if i would have done that so alrighty, let me go ahead and upload um the thumbnail and i'll see you guys soon bye bye